This is Ballistics, and you know what? I'm gonna let the game talk for itself. Two, one. The tagline on the box art doesn't lie. This is the fastest racing game I've ever played. It's pretty insane the speeds you can achieve. It goes up to Mach 3. It gets so fast that eventually it boils down to luck whether or not you hit something. All the audio just goes away and the graphics blur. It's, it's a rush. Sun Bun, the guy who's been making my thumbnails lately, got me to check this game out when he posted a clip of his gameplay in the CD-ROM Fossil Discord. Once I saw how cool this box art was, I just had to get a copy. Anyway, this was Grin's first developed game. You probably know them for Bionic Commando or Advanced Warfighter. It was published by Zycat in 2001. Ballistics looks absolutely fantastic to be a 2001 game that moves this quickly. I'm playing it in 16x9, 1920x1080, so there's times where the track pops in, but I don't think anyone saw this back then on a 4x3 screen. And yeah, it's a nice surprise that Ballistics works in Windows 10 and 16x9 with no issues whatsoever. It's a nice breath of fresh air to put the disc in and not to have to tinker with compatibility settings or something else. Alright, so what's this game offer besides breakneck speeds? Well, like any standard racing game, you got single races, then you got championships. You do have a shop where you can upgrade your vehicle, which, as you can see here, are basically bikes. Which reminds me, before we continue, I do have a question about this. The previously mentioned manual does have some lore. Basically, the world has become Earth and Star Trek. There's no disease, no conflict, nothing. Well, that made the population bored, so they needed some extreme entertainment. In comes Ballistics. Not entirely sure how audience consume these races. I guess it's all televised and people can see POV angles, but I don't know. Telecasters probably rely heavily on slow-mo replays. The manual explains that the speeders are magnetically held to the tracks. What it doesn't explain is how the racers aren't blown off the bikes due to the sheer force of speed and suddenly stopping when bonking something. Maybe they're just really, really strong, I don't know. Back to the store, you can earn cash in both single races and championships. Earning money is done by winning, achieving certain speeds, and of course there's little pickups along the way that you can snag during the races. Kinda hard to show them off when I'm typically flying past them, but they're there. Saving your game costs money, but besides that, everything else is profit then you can invest it in upgrading your speeder. The speeder has several attributes from like mass to acceleration to top speed and whatnot. Each race has eight CPUs, if I remember correctly. To be honest, I forget they exist. Ballistics has my biggest pet peeve in racing games, which is where they don't name the other racers. They are just CPU and a number. While the championships are supposed to be leagues, there's no ladders or standings. Rookie, you just have to finish the, each race on the podium. Pro, you have to finish in the top two. And Ballistic, you have to win each race. So there's no point system or changing of positions on the leaderboard. Kind of ruins any chance of immersing yourself in the world by creating rivalries or stories in your head. I don't know, maybe I'm just weird, but I love having other drivers and characters named with a leaderboard where they're going back and forth because it allows me to just kind of pick someone and say, you know what, that's my rival, I'm gonna make sure they're not gonna win. I don't know if that's just me, but I just, I love racing games where I can kind of simulate that off and on track drama. Rookie Championship has four tracks, even though the manual says it only has three. Okay, this manual actually has a few errors. It says the F keys can change the camera view and the color of the HUD. I've mashed all the F keys and nothing happens. Maybe my game is bugged, I don't know. Someone let me know if your F keys work and your Rookie League only has three tracks. Rookie Championship also has very forgiving magnetics. You'll never detach from the track. You see that triangle-ish shape on the HUD in the middle in that circle? That's showing you the curve of the track. You want to keep that below you to ensure you don't detach by flying over a hump or going straight into a corner instead of with the curve. Rookie means you can completely ignore that indicator and just fly down the track with only obstacles being your enemy. Pro has five tracks, and you will now detach if you hit obstacles or hit a curve wrong. 
Ballistics has all seven tracks and the AI flies through the whole thing like it's nothing. The tracks take place in USA, Belize, Tokyo, Russia, and Jamaica. Kind of weird that Europe's completely left out, but eh, whatever. USA also has three of the tracks. Some of the tracks have transparent sections so you can see the environment, which is neat and breaks up the fact that the majority of the game looks like Sewer Shark for the Sega CD. Each location has a certain amount of curves, boost recharge pickups, speeder cooling thingies, and seemingly random placement of obstacles. While they all look very similar, they are different in a lot of ways. Which brings us to the speeders and the actual racing, the meat and potatoes of the whole thing. Acceleration's pretty slow even with upgrades. Speed is found by boosting. You only have so much boost, and the only way to get more is to run over these yellow boost power-ups. Boosting and generally going fast raises your heat levels. Bonking obstacles also raises heat. Max heat means exploding. Once you explode, the race is over and you have to do it all over again. You only get three tries each track to actually win it. You can cool your speeder down by holding a button, but it brings your speed to a crawl. With each track being three laps during the championships, you super can't afford to do this on the last lap. There are cooling pads on the track, but relying on them is a bad habit to have because some tracks make them extremely sparse. This is where the upgrade shop comes in. There are upgrades that make your speeder almost indestructible. At a certain point, I stopped fearing blowing up. It honestly made the game that much easier because now risking it all by going full speed didn't mean losing the entire race. Sure. On ballistic difficulty, getting stopped by an obstacle means being overtaken by the AI. However, at least I have a chance to catch back up instead of being outright disqualified because of the whole blow up situation. I loved this game when I first booted it up, but the fact that you're able to get upgrades so quick to make yourself pretty unstoppable kind of ruins it for me. You can really go from rookie status to ballistic status in one sitting. You can see everything this game has to offer pretty quickly and you get so much money that I had a max upgraded speeder in no time. There isn't a whole lot of nuance or ways to improve times except memorization, knowing where the curves and obstacles are. I don't think there's really any way to hit a corner any quicker or more efficiently. As long as you're attached, then that's all you need to worry about. It's an awesome game for its graphics and speed, but not one that I'll revisit often. It doesn't beat F-Zero X or Pod Racer or Wave Race 64 or even Egger Torn Tires as Extreme Biker. There's not enough here to make me want to come back unless I just want to experience that extreme speed. Cool game, even the OST is pretty dope, but very lacking in content. And I don't think a racing game needs a lot of content to be good. I mean, you can beat Wave Race 64 in one sitting, no problem, but that game also has ways to improve track times, there's secrets, there's all kinds of cool little things you can do to make extend the life and replayability of it, while here, you're just playing Sewer Shark for the Sega CD over and over and over again. What's pretty incredible is that a few years after this game was released, an arcade version was developed. According to several sources, there were a few versions with some even including motion. So turning in the game, turn the seat you were in. I want to try this so badly. I've been to a lot of arcades and I know for a fact I've never seen this cabinet. If you live in the US and you happen to see this at an arcade near you, hit me up. I might just make the trip. Anyway, that's ballistics. I think this game is perfect for an arcade game because the experience is short and it's all about the thrill of the speed more so anything else. So I could see this game being a very successful arcade one and it's kind of a shocker that it wasn't. But anyway, that's Ballistics. A novelty to experience a few times, but not one I'm willing to master. It's a pretty abandoned game as no digital store has it for sale and Grin and Zycat no longer exist. So, you know, Google is your friend. I doubt we'll ever see it re-released, but if it was, I'd buy it. It'd be a fun game to revisit every once in a while just to remember how fast it is. The next video will be about a time trial racing game that I recently fell in love with. So yeah, back to back racing videos, but this gives me time to work on the behemoth that will be the Tex Murphy Under a Killing Moon review, which is what everyone voted for and um, I'm pretty excited about. Let me know what you think of Ballistics if you've ever played it and I cannot wait to showcase this next game. So I'll see you in that video, whatever that mysterious game is. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you there.